Did you know that 500 million people use Instagram stories every day? And that 58% of people say they have become more interested in a brand or product after seeing it in stories? I'm sure you've interacted with stories yourself, either viewing or posting them. And you may think, well, that's nice, but how can I use stories for my business? I'm so glad you asked. Today, I'll go over some strategic ways to use Instagram stories for your business. If you're new here, welcome. Go ahead and subscribe and ding the notification bell so that you don't miss out on our weekly marketing content. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Morgan from Life Marketing, the digital marketing agency that helps small businesses grow. Thanks for joining me today. Let's talk about Instagram stories for small business. Aside from posting selfies of your staff or cute pics of your work from home dog or kitty companions, how in the world are you supposed to use Instagram stories for your small business? Here are the tips I've learned from daily social media management and Instagram story specific testing. Stay through until the end for some of my pro tips, including some advice about your follower count that may surprise you. So the first way that you can use stories to grow your business, use stories to build a relationship and increase engagement. You might not think of stories as an engaging part of the app, but there are a ton of different ways that you and your fans can interact. Increase engagement by using Instagram stickers in your stories. When I talk about Instagram stickers, I'm not referring to the cute illustrations that you can add to your story. Those are gifts. Instagram stickers are an interactive element that you can use within your stories to get more engagement. There are a number of stickers that Instagram has added and they add more every so often to meet the needs of users. They recently added a captions option, for example, that will auto-generate captions for you directly in your stories and added options specifically for small businesses last year. So let's take a look at those now. The donation sticker is a great way to help out your favorite nonprofit or charity and encourage your audience to do the same. You'll choose the sticker and select the nonprofit that you'd like to support. With the quiz sticker, you can ask your fans a question and let them choose between a couple of options. When you add the sticker, you can change the title and add answers. Tapping the dice icon at the bottom gives you a random question. So if you're feeling uninspired, play with that. You'll start with two answer options, but you can add up to four. Tap the correct answer, highlighted in green, and your audience will know immediately if what they've chosen is correct or incorrect. Be sure to tap the correct answer, that will be highlighted in green, that way your audience will know immediately if they answered correctly or incorrectly. Use a countdown sticker. Do you have a big launch event coming up or a sale that's starting or ending soon? You can use the sticker in so many ways. When you select the sticker, you'll be able to edit the name. You wanna make it clear and exciting and set an end date and time. There's a toggle option to allow viewers to turn on reminders and share the countdown to their stories, which I recommend leaving on. Instagram will remind them so that you don't have to. The music sticker lets you select a song to add to your stories. This is a fun option for small businesses because normally you couldn't afford to license most of these songs for use. You can't use the full song, but you can use up to 15 seconds of the song in your stories. So play around with that and have fun. The question sticker. A big part of growing your engagement is interacting with your customers regularly beyond liking their comments and thanking them for sharing, liking, or commenting on your posts. You need to have conversations with your customers and a great way to do this is to invite them to talk to you. I love using the question sticker because you can collect and share responses. If you're going to share responses, I would blur out the user's name or ask their permission and make sure that you tag them to show them a little bit of love. The poll sticker is similar to the quiz where you get to select the title and give a few options. But unlike the quiz, there is no right or wrong answer. This is a nice option for businesses because you can ask your customers what they want to see. What would this look like in practice? If you're not sure about a color selection for an upcoming product, or you're not sure about a new service that you're considering offering, go ahead and ask. There's nothing wrong with asking. And in fact, your customers want to be involved in the process. The location sticker is a great option for local businesses who want more people to visit them or just to know that they exist. You can encourage your customers to use this location sticker in their stories as well by offering a small discount when they show it to you. Or you could run a giveaway once a month where you pull from every user who has used your location and tag you in their story. Experiment with incentivizing your users. The time and weather sticker. These aren't quite as interactive as the others, but they can add a personal touch to your stories. Let's say you're a skate shop based in Colorado and you're hosting skate events during the cold months. You can share a video of the event with the weather tag to show how devoted your customers are to brave the cold. The support small businesses sticker was added last year. This allows users to tag a small business in their stories. This gives viewers a preview of that business's Instagram feed, the first three posts show, 
and takes them there directly when folks click. Encourage your biggest fans to use the Support Small Businesses sticker and to tag you. You can attract more followers and get more engagement by hosting a giveaway in stories. Put together a quiz about your brand or products and choose from correct answers to win a gift card or other prize from your business. When you're hosting a giveaway, it's important to balance an exciting prize with a prize that fits your target audience and your business. For example, if you're a coffee shop looking to get more engagement and followers, you wouldn't want to choose a $1,000 gift card to an online retailer. It seems like a great prize, but that prize would be attractive to almost anyone. That could result in you getting a bunch of followers or entries from people who don't even live in your area and have no intention of supporting your business. And when you run a giveaway like that, most of those followers will unfollow you almost immediately after the giveaway ends. Instead, I'd go with something that applies directly to your business, like a gift set. You can include a mug, maybe there's a local designer or ceramics artist who you could support, put in a bag of coffee from a local roaster if possible, and include a generous gift card to your store. This will make sure that only people in your area who are really into coffee are going to enter that giveaway. Let's talk about how you might set that giveaway up in stories. You can create a series of quiz stories that ask customers to identify your signature drink names. Select from the users who answer them all correctly or just choose from anyone who participated. Or you can use a question sticker to ask fans to name your brand new drink. The winning name can be chosen by you or voted on by your audience. You could give the winner a permanent spot on the menu along with your gift basket. Next, let's look at using stories to increase sales. Okay, so we covered engagement, which is great, but you're probably wondering when I'm going to get to those conversions. And is it even possible to increase sales in stories? Aren't stories just for reposting TikToks? Stories is a powerful selling tool. According to Instagram, 50% of people have visited a website to make a purchase after seeing a product or service in stories. Let's talk about sales, baby. Number one, Utilize the swipe up feature as soon as it's available to you. This feature allows you to link directly to the product or page that relates to your story. When users swipe up, they see your web page in full screen and it pauses the story so when they close it, they're right back where they started. In order to get the Instagram swipe up feature, your account must be an Instagram business profile and you have to have over 10,000 followers. If you're not there yet, don't worry. Keep growing your followers and engaging authentically you'll get there eventually. Second way to increase sales is to tag your products. You've probably seen ads like this one. When users tap, they'll be taken to the product where they can see more images, read details, see pricing information, and purchase either in the app or by clicking through to your website. This opens a full screen experience that will take users out of the distraction of their feeds or stories and away from competition, whether that be your actual competitors or the world's grumpiest cat. And let's be honest, who wouldn't choose the world's grumpiest cat? I do it every time. Enough about grumpy cats. Let's break down how to tag products. Before you can sell on Instagram, which means before you can tag products, you'll need to have an eligible business. Here are Instagram's four requirements. Your business needs to be located in a supported market. Instagram selling isn't available in every country, but over 90 countries have this option you need to sell an eligible product. Your business needs to comply with the merchant policies and commerce policies, and your business needs to sell from a domain that you own. You'll also wanna make sure that you have a business account, not a personal account, and that you connect your Instagram to your Facebook page. You'll need to create one if you don't already have one. I recommend setting these up in your Facebook business manager so that you can manage your ads and content all in one place. After you have those ducks in a row, you'll upload your product catalog. You can do this in one of two ways. You can use the catalog manager in the Facebook business manager. This is a great option for most businesses. If you have a few products, you can add all the information manually. If you have hundreds or thousands of products or products that are updated frequently, using a catalog feed that pulls the information directly from your website so that you don't have to manually manage each product every time it changes, is a great option. You can also use an integration with a supported e-commerce platform like Shopify or BigCommerce. Once your catalog is uploaded, you'll submit your account for review. Make sure that you verified your domain in the Facebook Business Manager so there aren't any delays in using your catalog. After the review is complete, you'll be able to turn on shopping ads and start tagging products. Another great way to increase sales in Instagram stories is to run ads. You can run ads to stories on both Instagram and Facebook from the Facebook Business Manager, and I recommend using this placement often. Brand stories have an 86% completion rate, meaning folks watched it all the way through, and 50% of Instagram users are more interested in a brand after seeing an ad for it on Instagram. Here are the best practices for running your Instagram stories ads. Optimize for mobile. 
You'll manage your ads in the Facebook Business Manager for both Facebook and Instagram. It's really convenient that the two are combined, but make sure that you take the extra time to optimize your story's ads for mobile. You can use stickers in your ads too. If you want help brainstorming stickers to use in your ads, leave me a comment and I'll share some ideas. Optimize for silent viewing. Make sure any and all video you put out into the world is optimized for silent viewing. Be sure to include captions on all of your videos. Watch your placements. You can use automated placements for your Instagram and Facebook ads so they'll be shown in the best combination. I recommend checking your placements and making adjustments as needed. Tag your products. Yes, you can tag products in Instagram Stories ads, so make sure that you've uploaded your product catalog and tag away. Shoot on mobile. Don't worry about getting fancy cameras for shooting your Stories ads. Mobile shot Stories ads outperform studio shot ads 63% of the time. And with the quality of cameras and phones these days, there's really no need to go out and purchase an entire studio setup for your Stories ads. The expectation for Stories is that they're a more casual experience, and Stories ads shot on mobile often feel more like content than an ad. Another great way to increase sales is to create an instant experience. Within an instant experience, people can watch videos, swipe through photos in a carousel, view products in your catalog, explore images with tagged products, and tap buttons to go to other web pages. Viewers can interact at their own pace, which gives them a more personalized experience, helping them fall in love with your business all over again, or for the first time. Ads with an instant experience appear in mobile Facebook newsfeed, Facebook stories, Instagram feed, Instagram stories, and other placements. The available placements will depend on your ad format and your instant experience components. After you run your ad, you can analyze your results with metrics for instant experience. Metrics include instant experience view time, instant experience view percentage, and more. Here are some instant experience best practices. An instant experience starts with an ad and opens into full screen. Make the initial ad a must click for your audience. Be sure to brand your instant experience so people know who to fall in love with. I like to put my clients' logos in the header section of the experience as soon as you open it up. And it's a good idea to mention your brand throughout. Use one of the templates that Instagram provides until you're comfortable with the format. Why recreate the wheel when you don't have to? Be sure to mix video, text, images, carousels, and product catalogs throughout the experience to keep things interesting and to keep folks scrolling to see more. Include multiple call to action or CTA buttons and invite users to click. If you have something that's time sensitive, like a sale or a product that's selling out quickly, let your viewers know that too. This will create urgency and make them more likely to click that CTA button. Stories ads that emphasize the call to action perform better 89% of the time. Use existing ad and post creative in combination with your product catalog to save you time during creation. Again, don't recreate the wheel. You have a lot of existing content that you can combine to create a great instant experience. Now that you have a good idea of how to increase engagement and sales, let's move on to using stories for market research. But first, if you're enjoying this video so far and find this information helpful, give it a thumbs up to let me know and subscribe to our channel. We're working really hard to make a ton of small business marketing content for you, so you don't wanna miss out on that. Let's talk about how to use stories for market research. I referred to some of this when talking about stickers and ads, but let's look at more specific examples of how you can use these tools to figure out what your audience wants to see. And I know you might be thinking, hold up, Morgan, market research? What? Market research sounds very official and very expensive, but it doesn't have to be. Market research really just refers to any organized effort to learn more about your audience. That includes who they are, what they're interested in, and what products might be valuable to them. Ask your customers what they want to see. Use yes or no stickers for folks to vote on an upcoming product, event, or topic. Use open-ended questions and a message sticker. I like to use the question sticker for more open-ended answers, so it just depends on your goals. The next thing you can do is use stories to humanize your brand. You're a small business, which means there's you, maybe some family members, or a few employees keeping everything going. It's amazing and you shouldn't keep the human side of you away from your business. But that doesn't mean that you should share all of your private life or that your business needs to reflect you in everything that you do. It does mean, however, that you should show the people that make up your business. Show yourself or your team fulfilling orders. Share photos from the company lunch. Announce and celebrate your employee of the month. Or show your employees laughing or collaborating. Remember that stories are a casual experience, so don't make things too corporate. Match your audience and the tone of your business and industry when it makes sense. Here are a few things to keep in mind as we wrap up. Follower count isn't everything. In fact, small business accounts with a dedicated following actually receive more engagement 
than huge business accounts. An Instagram business account with fewer than 10,000 followers sees an average 1.5% engagement rate, but that drops to 0.62% for a business account with more than 100,000 followers. It's better to have a small, dedicated, engaged customer base than millions of followers. And speaking of followers, never ever buy followers. Not only is it against Instagram's terms of service and could get your account disabled, but it won't actually do you any good because those folks are most likely robots. And if they are real humans, they're not your ideal customer. Likes are nice, but you want to grow a business with customers who will eventually buy from you, preferably sooner than later. Remember that growing your follower on Instagram takes time. The average Instagram business account sees a follower growth of just 1.46% every month. I recommend spending at least $150 a month to promote your account and find new followers. For more tips on growing your following, like this video and subscribe. That's the complete guide to Instagram stories for small businesses. I hope you found this video informative and that it sparked a new marketing idea for you. Let me know if you have any questions about using stories for your business and tell me what you try and how it goes for you. If you need help brainstorming or you want more explanation, let me know in the comments too and I'll help out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in an upcoming video. Happy marketing.